Coming up tonight, over 1,100 people murdered during the last decade. We've got the breakdown. A new immigration bill to hit Parliament this year. Plus, Nima wants to rely less on NGOs. Welcome to Our News, the weekend edition, and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. During the period between January 2010 and December 2019, there were 1,140 murders according to nine years of police crime stats and Our News records. Jared Higgs breaks down that staggering figure and tells us how some members of the public feel about crime heading into a new decade. As the country enters a new decade, some Bahamians are sounding off on a 10-year period that saw the country record 1,140 murders. Last year, they had people driving around, shooting up anyone on the air and stuff like that. We can't even come outside our own home and stuff like that. Because other gang members coming to our hood, shooting up everyone and stuff like that. Anthony Lang is a Calmersville resident and the father of a young child. He says the country's jails aren't doing much to rehabilitate offenders. Jail ain't doing nothing for these niggas. Because also they come out of jail, they still going back and killing all over again. So jail ain't doing nothing. But sometimes it feel like... Some niggas feel like uh, if they go to jail, they have to be bad. When they come out, they have to be a killer. I might be wrong, you know, but I don't like the killing. I just tell my family the other day, I said, man, 2020, I hope this killing slow down. Andrew Burroughs is a father of seven. He blames the country's crime woes on several factors. I guess parenting has taken somewhat of a dip. We, we, we fell off from the way we were raised. And I guess coming in with the technology, things are so much different. Uh, it's much more accessible to the kids to see things that we didn't see. Uh, like I say, me coming up, it was more imaginative, being outside, playing with tops and different stuff like that. But it may be a crime wave. I, I just think it's a, it's a society problem. Over the course of the decade, the murder count fluctuated, starting at 94 in 2010 and spiking at a record high 146 in 2015. 2018's count of 91 was the lowest since 2010, but an increase to 96 in 2019 all but erased those gains. Deidre Scavella is a retired grandmother raising three of her grandsons mostly on her own. The widow says coping with the effects of crime is hardest on single parents. Um, many of us, um, single parents, you know, family homes, mommy's there, no daddy. Some daddies, they, they are there, but then it's like they're not there, they're out to lunch. So it all goes back to the old school days, the fashion, the way that we would, you know, want things, want things to be. Reporting for Our News Weekend, I am Jared Higgs. A bill that recommends sweeping changes to the country's immigration laws will get Parliament's attention this year, according to Attorney General Carl Bethel. The Nationality, Immigration and Asylum Bill addresses the long-standing problem of statelessness and the rights of Bahamians to pass on their, citizen their citizenship. The bill was put out for consultation on February 21, 2018. According to Bethel, feedback is being reviewed now. Bethel added a number of the comments received during that process have been factored in. The bill would establish a right to abode or a right to live in the Bahamas for anyone born in the Bahamas to foreign parents while they are a minor before they reach 18. It would also establish a right to live in the Bahamas for anyone born legitimately outside the Bahamas to a Bahamian mother while that person is still a minor. Well, while many Bahamians have a general understanding of the plastics ban as it relates to one-time use plastics, senior environmental officer in the Ministry of Environment, Dr. Rihanna Neely Murphy, reminded the public that it is now illegal to release helium balloons into the air during celebrations. The plastic ban is in full effect as of the 1st of January, 2020. With that effective date, the release of balloons, any quantity of balloons, is made illegal in the Bahamas. The selling of the balloon is not illegal. It is illegal to release the balloon. So you can still have this balloon or these balloons at your parties, at your functions, special occasions, wherever you would normally use them. But it is important to know that we cannot release these balloons. So hopefully the message gets out there through this interview that people can still purchase these balloons, but you just can't release them. 
However, it seems some party supply stores are unclear on the new ban. When our news called some of those stores, they insisted that their balloons are biodegradable. However, environment officials insist it's still not safe. So in many instances, what biodegradable means is that a fossil fuel plastic product was treated with some kind of a resin that allows it to break down and get smaller and smaller and smaller. It does not go back to its composite components, so the components that, make, that actually make it up. It'll just get smaller and smaller and smaller and turn into something that we call microplastics. These microplastics are even more dangerous to the environment than the large balloon that it broke down from. So it is important that for people to understand that these are not really going away. We are not be able to see them with our naked eyes, but the fish still consume them. They still make their way into the ocean and they still cause an even greater problem. We have fish that we have studied with plastics in their tissues. So you will never open a fish and actually see the plastic in them because the plastic has become a part of the fish tissue. And we eat the fish tissue. That's the filet that we eat. So it is important that we nip this problem in the bud. When asked about the mixed reactions to the new, to the new plastic ban that took effect on January 1st, Dr. Neely Murphy said this. We have been um, alerting the public to the plastic ban now for over a year and a half. And as we anticipated that as the ban got closer and closer, that people would really start paying more and more attention. So we have been doing um, rounds on, social, on the radio stations, on the TV stations. We're here today to try to allay fares, to help people to understand the impacts of the ban, why the ban is important. But we want people to see opportunities in this ban and not see this as something being taken away from them. On the selling of the plastic bags, it is also important to note that we do not encourage people to purchase these plastic bags. The 25 cents is there as a deterrent. We would like for you to carry, to walk with your reusable bags. The National Emergency Management Agency hopes to make several changes to its operations ahead of the 2020 hurricane season, including being better equipped to handle the overwhelming amount of assistance from the international community and rel relying less on NGOs. Georgia Bain reports. NEMA is also working on a way to better process the tons of donations and articulate what is needed. The flow of information, the need for information management. Again, we have been in contact with our um, IT unit here and um, IT department to see how we can better manage the flow of information that is coming to the country um, or that is coming as a result of the event. So um, a number of things we're now trying to see how we could um, further um, strengthen our, our disaster preparedness and response mechanism. Russell added that there must be core teams in place so that the country would not have to rely so heavily on NGOs in the future. We saw in the case of Abaco where we had such a major destruction, all of government personnel had to evacuate and we had NGOs going and trying to run a business for us. Now we need to make sure that we have core teams that are not a part of the disaster or the trauma, that we can get some new teams into a community and they can carry the function for us to resume the function of government as quickly as possible instead of having almost a two or three month delay before the functions of government get started. Again. Reporting for our news, I'm Georgia Bain. In light of a revelation that over 300 police officers did not receive a $1,400 lump sum payment promised by government, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Finance Peter Turnquist said that government does not want to open that box of extending the payment to public service workers on contract. Police Staff Association Chairman Sergeant Sonny Miller recently revealed that the excluded officers are all on year-to-year -year contracts, which he said is protocol for officers from constable to sergeant who have reached 25 years of service and are considered to have reached pension. He said that they are still serving members of the police force and that they feel slighted by the exclusion. Turnquist said government would look at information brought to, brought to light by the PSA, but also noted officials should be careful that they don't open that box because it could become a huge situation. Well, the deputy prime minister also telling reporters that Equinor is making significant progress in cleaning up that oil spill in the East Grand Bahama. During the passage of Hurricane Dorian, the roofs of several of Equinor's oil tanks blew off, spilling oil across the property into the neighboring forest. Equinor has confirmed that some 55,000 barrels of oil were spilled. So uh, as far as I'm aware, um, and I, I have not looked at a report so in the last uh, oh, so two, three weeks, I mean, uh, they were making significant progress. Uh, they had tested one day, they have continuous he's, he's monitoring of air, uh, and uh, right there's now, been no detectable levels uh, above uh, um, the norms. Uh, they have done uh, test wells, and they have uh, determined that there is no pollution of the, of the water, groundwater at this point. Uh, so we continue to, to monitor and, and, and 
to observe the levels, and they will do that for, over, for the next year to make sure that there is no issues. He added that cleanup is a long-term process. The ground itself has been cleaned. Uh, the forest uh, has been uh, is continuing to be mediated, um, and, and the areas that were, were, were significantly um, affected have been cleaned already. Um, so they, they've, they've been making significant progress. But again, this is too a long-term monitoring process to make sure that there is no uh, long-lasting or long-term delayed effects from this storm. Still to come, the central bank governor addresses the future of banking on the family islands, plus a look at eco-friendly products that can help you adjust to the plastics ban. Stay tuned. Internet is good. TV is good. But why just pick one thing when you can have everything with Trio? Only $99 a month gets you phone, internet, and cable. That's everything you need for $99 a month. Ask for Trio. Call 601-2200 or email residentialsales at cablebahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. You're watching Our News. Welcome back. Officials from the Central Bank of the Bahamas are looking to address the issue of banking on the family islands. With many branches shutting down, financial transactions are becoming more and more difficult for those residents, and it has not gone unnoticed by bank officials. Jasmine Brown reports. Central Bank Governor John Roll says with more and more banks shuttering their doors in the family islands, mobile banking is clearly the way forward. We're heading in a direction really where your mobile phone becomes your ATM. It becomes your ATM for making withdrawals and it becomes your ATM eventually for making deposits into your bank account. So the, the convenience of having a, a branch in your settlement or a few settlements down from where you live, um, that should become a non-issue in the future. The branch closures have also gotten the attention of the Minutes administration. In 2018, Deputy Prime Minister Peter Turnquist said the government is concerned by bank branch closures in the family islands. However, the DPM also suggested these situations are inevitable with the constant evolution of technology, which requires less brick-and-mortar locations and bodies. He also insisted the country has been hit hard by bank closures because Bahamians were not prepared to take advantage or adapt to new technology. However, the central bank is looking at just that. In December, officials launched the pilot phase of the sand dollar digital currency in Exuma. If, if it's a question of getting comfortable with the technology, it is designed to be simple and easy to use. The whole idea behind Getting people comfortable using electronic payment system is to make it simple and easy to use. People are also often concerned about whether funds they hold in electronic form, digitally or otherwise, you know, they can lose it. It can be stolen from them. A lot of effort goes into the design of our payment system to make certain that security is present, the safeguards around the funds are there. Roll says online banking is also vital for banks as they seek to streamline banking in far-flung communities. There should also be increased convenience for banks and other financial institutions to provide services to people in remote communities if they don't have to go there and set up a physical office just to do so. So you may suddenly go from having just your one bank branch where you have to go to make your deposit to being able to choose from the list of banks that can provide you the service, provided that it can, it's being done um, electronically. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. Well, as Bahamians struggle to adjust to the new ban on single-use plastics, one store is hoping to make the transition a bit easier. Georgia Bain reports. If the January 1st plastic ban caught you a bit off guard and you're trying to figure out where you can get all your necessary eco-friendly utensils and bags without having to order them online, the paper place says local stores are here to help. 
owner Morgan Welds has stood distributing the products for over three years in preparation for the 2020 ban. She said the new products don't have to hurt your pockets. Business has been really good. I think people are really receptive to the idea of switching over to the reusable um, grocery tote bags. Um, we also do a lot of the uh, eco-friendly food packaging, so we've had a huge uptick in business. A lot of people coming in, getting samples, and realizing that um, they can switch over and it's, it's going to be pretty affordable. Hot and cold containers, forks, spoons, straws, and even ice cream containers, all made of sugar cane, can be purchased at the paper place. Um, so we have the uh, eco-friendly, uh, what they're made of is sugar cane food containers. So we have the 8x8s and 9x9s, you know, the typical, um, what you would see at um, Bamboo Shack or some uh, takeout boxes. We also do all the cutlery. We have the compostable straws, which are much better than the paper straws. I really recommend them. We also have cups, hot cups, cold cups. Um, so we've got lots of options. We've got the reusable stainless steel straws. I mean, the list goes on and on. Basically, anything that you would be using right now in plastic and styrofoam, we have an alternative for. While many are still trying to adjust to purchasing reusable grocery bags, Wells has an assortment of durable eco-friendly bags that can even be personalized. Yep, our bags start at $4 each, and if you're buying in bulk, then we do a discounted price, and the $4 uh, bags are uh, 12 by 13 inches. So I use them all the time. I've actually been using them for the last year, and I don't have a single one that's had a tear or hole. They're really, really durable. We also do the custom printing on them. So if you're a business and you want to give them away um, to your, some of your good customers and we offer that as well. While some businesses say more time should have been given to the adjustment period, Weld said she feels that the Ministry of Environment did its part. I definitely think that the education was out there. Um, you know, there's, you, you could always say people could do more, but I definitely think they did a, a pretty good job in going around. There were town hall meetings and putting the notices up. So I, I, I think it was done pretty well. And I think now, you know, they're giving a transition period of six months. So I think that's really great and allowing people the time to really get to do some research and find out how they can switch over. Reporting for our News Weekend Edition, I'm Georgie O'Bain. Still to come, Team Challenge outlines its 2020 goals. Plus, who gave us the quote of the week? Stay tuned. For decades, Teen Challenge Bahamas has helped thousands of young people overcome addiction. In recent years, the program has become one of the top rehabilitation centers due to alternative court sentencing. Executive Director Eric Fox says 2020 will be the year of empowerment for teens. We Teen Challenge run a couple of uh, programs. We, run an, um, uh, we have a, li a living residential treatment program, living residential program to empower young men. Teen Challenge is an international drug rehabilitation program that has one of the highest success rates in the world. The first center opened in New York in 1960 and has grown to over 1,060 centers in 82 countries. The organization focuses primarily on evangelism and discipleship of persons with life-controlling problems. The ministry typically consists of outreach and evangelism, living free support groups, and a resident recovery program. Fox says the nonprofit organization will continue to make a difference in the lives of troubled men and women so that they can be empowered in the future. We also do a temperament program every Thursday night is to empower persons and help them with anger management and, and, and conflict resolution and, and, and all that good stuff, man. It's about empowering people. Still to come, find out who gave us the quote of the week. Plus, we introduce our Sunday sports feature. Stay tuned. Internet is good. TV is good. But why just pick one thing when you can have everything with Tria? Only $99 a month gets you phone, internet, and cable. That's everything you need for $99 a month. Ask for Tria. Call 601-2200 or email residentialsales at cablebahamas.com. Rev, you and us together. watching our news welcome back 
it, that, it's that time when we count down the most memorable quotes of the week. In at number three is Lakeitra Moss, who said she didn't expect things to escalate at the New Year's Day Junk Canoe Parade when she was allegedly slapped to the ground by police. And I look at the video and I was like, I can't believe like, they actually like, slapped me down. And I like, they can't even tell you why. Like, they can't tell you that we just this arrest or like, we disrespect them or like, we cause and care on or like, you know, like it wasn't even nothing like that. Like, we just, was, they tell us go. We're trying to get our stuff to go. Like, they just, I don't, I, don't, I don't even know that. It just happens so fast. In at number two is the grieving girlfriend of a young man gunned down on New Year's Day, becoming the country's first murder victim of the year. How was he as a dad? Oh my God. Can't ask for a better one. <laughs> and quote of the week goes to Shell Saxon Superstars PR director Kendany Campbell Moss, who had this response to those who felt the group did not deserve its clean sweep in the New Year's Day Junk Loop Parade. In response to the other groups that have said that we cried, well, we ain't nothing but a crybaby, a sausage in there, and you lick it, stick it there. Take that penny sausage and stick it right in there. The Saxons won the parade. Welcome to the islands of the Bahamas. We win. Deal with it.